Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another Master Grade review and this time we're going to be taking a look at the Master Grade Gundam The Origin. This is well regarded as one of the, if not the best variant of the Oryx 782 in Master Grade. And today we're not going to be taking a look at one of them, we're going to be taking a look at two because this one right here is a little bit different. This one right here is what's known as an in-store lottery prize, aka Ichiban Kuji. So basically you just buy a ticket and you'll win one of a whole multitude of prizes. This one right here, as you can see, is the A prize. So this is the second best one you can get. And of course, it's the Master Grade 1100 RX-78 II Gundam, Gundam The Origin, Solid Clear Standard. So far as what the Solid Clear Standard means is, well, the chest as well as other sections are what's known as Solid Clear. So it's clear with some color. And the standard parts are all the white sections on this, which are in a standard white plastic, but it is a brilliant white. So like I said, this is the second best variant of this you can get. The first best is what's known as the last one. If you buy the last ticket the store has to offer, and what you get is the complete inverted version of this kit. That would be the standard slash solid clear. So that means that all of the parts we saw on this, which are in standard plastic, would be in clear and vice versa. A bit confusing? Yeah, definitely. But as usual, when it comes to hard to get Gunpla, including Premium Bandai, as well as these Ichiban Kuji prizes, this video right here would not be possible without those absolutely fantastic people over at Baiyi. So if you're looking for something like this yourself, I'll put the links down there in the description to buy one of your own. This time, not through Amazon, I actually bought it through Rakuten, but here we go. So right there is what both variants of the kits look like out of the box and snap together. So first off, I will mention that the one here on the left is the standard full release version. This is one magnificent kit right here. This has been given a little bit of extra effort, well, a long, long time ago. And that would be a little bit of panel lining here and there. Nothing too extreme. On the right then is the Ichiban Kuji version, that is the solid clear standard version, and there's nothing standard about the standard aspects about this kit. I will mention I did no extra effort on this kit, this is what it looks like out of the box snapped together with just some stickers on the eyes I think, but I'll take a look at the stickers in a minute. But yeah, like I said, there is nothing standard about the standard aspects of that Ichiban Kuji version because it is in a brilliant white, whereas the standard full release version of the Origin Gundam is in more of a off-white towards a kind of beigey color. It looks really nice. Very, very nice. So while I have a bit of a comparison already going here, there is the Granddaddy 3.0. So that is the Master Grade Gundam 3.0 just there for a bit of a comparison. Back when I used to do the best Master Grades of the year, when there was enough Master Grades in a year to do a top 10, this guy right here was my number one of 2015 because it is an off the charts awesome kid without a doubt. So a lot of the time when people are trying to choose which original Gundam they want to buy, which Master Grade original Gundam they want to buy, they usually narrow it down to one of the two here. That is the Master Grade 3.0 and the Master Grade The Origin. So basically, in general, which of these would I recommend is something I'm asked all the time, and I would say, go for this one. This one definitely packs in that kind of real grade look. It's even got those stickers, the multiple colors of white, so much detail, but it's not as much fun to play around with. This one has some of the best articulation in a master grade. It's solid as a rock. And in the box, we get a whole lot of extra optional parts that you do not get with this guy right here. Of course, if it's between these two right here, I'd also recommend this one. It's not really worth the premium for this here unless you're a crazy collector. In that case, I'd say totally go for it. It is awesome as well. But all in all, as far as I'm concerned, this right here is the best 1-100 scale Oryx 78 2 you can get. But that is from the three that I've looked at. That's just these. I haven't seen the Verka, the 2.0, the original. So it's a very narrow selection I have here to choose from. But I'd say go for this one anyway. Besides the obvious differences between the two, which of course is the type of plastic, colors, etc., these do serve to show the differences you can make within this one awesome kit. For example, this one's set up with that standard RX-78 double beam saber storage back here. This one has the shoulder cannon. Both kits have these options. Flip it around a little bit further and you can see this one has a plain right arm. This one has that extra little gun piece attached. And as well as that, we also have the choice between a blue little cover on the Gatling gun in the shoulder or the yellow one up here. So straight off the bat, you have a whole load of choices when it comes to this particular kit. And we haven't even gone on to the accessories yet. Still awesome. But anyway, let's compare them a bit more. So moving on to a few quick spins. There is the standard version right there looking awesome. That's got that shoulder cannon attached. Both arm weapons as well as the yellow bit up on the shoulder. But this is the standard kit that you get if you buy the full release version, which I highly recommend that you do. Up next, side by side with it, is the Master Grade 3.0. A bit of a spin so you can take a look at the difference aesthetically between the two. 
Definitely when it comes to looks, it's hard to choose between the two, which is better. There's a kind of awesome simplicity and unique design to the Origin version with that smaller head etc. But when it comes to surface detailing, colors, part separation etc, the 3.0 wins hands down. Next up then, there's a side by side of the standard full release version on the left. And on the right there, we've got the Ichiban Kuji version. That is the solid clear standard version. Both of these are absolutely awesome for two completely different reasons. And at the end of the day, it will come down to your personal taste. Also, before I finish talking about this thing's looks, there it is once again beside the Master Grade 3.0. And I will mention, they both have the same hands, which look a little bit oversized because these were originally for the new Gundam, which is a much bigger bot, as you can see right there. So these hands do look a little bit out of proportion with these kits, in my opinion. Also, it is worth noting that this right here still classes as a 2.0. It's written on the front of this box, which is interesting. It also does use some parts from the 2.0 in its build. Not a lot, but there is one runner in there. I think it's just for the arms. So now moving on to the accessories, and there is the Master Grade Gundam, the origin with absolutely everything that comes in the box. And look at all this stuff. So this kit right here comes with a whole host of options. As for the weapons in here, we've got the bazooka, some extra missiles, two versions of the beam rifle, two beam sabers. Next up then we've got the shield. And as for options, we've got that shoulder cannon, gun for on the wrist, yellow part for on the shoulder, clear eye parts in case you want to use it with an LED unit, three different effect parts, your standard base adapter, one 100 scale figure of Amuro Ray, a set of sticker style decals. And as for the color correcting stickers, it's just eyes, lenses, scopes, etc. So nothing to make up for any wrong colors. So as for the hands in here, we've got those set of perfect grade style hands. So these are completely posable. You may like these, you may not. They can be a little bit finicky and they are a bit on the delicate side. But all in all, it means you don't have to be swapping out any fingers. As for the optional parts, the first thing we have here is for on the wrist. So this is a standard wrist. This is only available for the right arm. The left arm always has this little gun segment sort of section. So if you want that section can just be removed like so. And then we can attach on this little piece like this. And that way, we can have two of them. The next optional part, of course, is for up here on this little Gatling gun section. This opens up. The Gatling gun is in there. As for the standard version, that already has the yellow section on there. That is what this right here is, of course. This is the clear yellow version, but it would look a little something like that. I'm not going to attach it. But there it is on the standard version. And of course, that opens up like that for that awesome little Gatling. The next optional part we have in here is this. This is some clear parts for the eyes. So we do have the option of this or a not clear part. When you're using the not clear part, you might as well stick in those reflective stickers so they catch the light. But as for the clear sections, like the ones I have in here, that means you can use it with one of Bandai's LED units. This one right here is a orange or yellow one. These things are notoriously rubbish. I don't know how Bandai failed so hard at making something that basically just connects two batteries to an LED, but Hopefully this will work. Ugh, look at that. Flicker, flicker. These things are so terrible. Hopefully this will hold up so I can demonstrate the eyes. So in order to do this, you just flip them around, pop off the backpack like so, and then you can remove the head and back segment like this. The LED unit then just pops in there, switch it on, hope it works. Oh, it is. I wish these actually worked all the time because when they're in, they look undeniably, and I mean undeniably cool. Then you just pop that back into the neck just like so, on with the backpack, flip it around and hope the eyes are working in. They're not. <sighs> Seriously. Anyway, there they are in and there is no denying that that looks so effective, so awesome. This is even better than just, well, using the stickers like this guy right here. Look at that. They really stand out and just look awesome. The stickers are quite cool when they catch the light, but when they don't, they can look a little bit on the dull side. All in all though, when these do work, they work a charm. By the way, that uh, LED unit, not included. So sometimes Bandai Spirits do something absolutely and utterly awesome and I wonder why they never ever do it again. And this time, it's these right here. This is a Gundam model kit with effect parts. Shooting effect parts. How awesome is that? Why are these not a standard thing? They're awesome. The orange ones are for the Ichiban Kuji version and the light yellow ones, those are the standard versions. So these right here are the ones we're using with the shoulder Gatlings. They just pop into a little bit of a hole just above the Gatling. And these look awesome. Look at that. Just firing off some shots. I do prefer the one here that came with the Ichiban Kuji version because it looks like the colors are going from light to dark because of the particular shade of color. Either way though, those look absolutely awesome. I wish we got more things like this more often. 
So next up then we've got the ones that go into that wrist gun. These can be used on either our arm, and honestly I don't know if it's just me, but they look like they pop into the mouth of a tiny tiny face, which is hilarious. But anyway, they look absolutely and utterly awesome. Look at that. Again, I want more of this in model kits. Bandai, more of this please. Once again, I do think the orange one right there looks that little bit better. And speaking of which, why not try that in this one right here? So of course, they are swappable between both kits because they're identical. So next up then we've got the missile effect part. These attach on just up onto the double missile launcher up on the shoulder. And I will mention that these are definitely the most disappointing of the three because these are meant to be a missile shooting out with the effect part just being the blast behind them, just like you can see in this little image right here. So they are not color accurate, and if you want them to look right, you're gonna have to paint them. But all in all, still pretty cool. So the next option in here is the shoulder cannon. This is pretty awesome. There's a whole bunch of articulation to this right here for, well, moving it over the shoulder. And there pretty much is the difference between the optional parts. So you can have the double beam saber storage up there, or have the over the shoulder cannon. And honestly, I totally prefer the cannon. The more weapons on a Gundam, the better. This shoulder cannon and the individual weapons inside the torso, I think are awesome. So cool. And speaking of the beam sabers, these are pretty generic. Just your standard pair of beam sabers. When not in use, you can just pop these off. If you're going that classic double beam saber storage route, then this right here is what it will look like. But I will mention on this, these little tabs like to fall out a lot. Just a little bit of a shake and out they come. If you're going with the shoulder cannon, that means just one beam saber. And I will mention with this version, for whatever reason, that tab does not fall out. Actually, it's kind of hard to get out, good and stiff. But anyway, there is the two variants of that backpack. So next up in here, we've got two different variations of the beam rifle. This one is more closer to the classic style, but this awesome beefy one, this I like a lot. So right there is the first of the two. This is the more classic looking one. And speaking of which, there is the one that comes with the 3.0 for comparison. So it's pretty much the same design as the original granddaddy's beam rifle, except this time around, it does have a clear piece in there with a foil sticker behind it, as opposed to that more usual, just yellow piece. This side section on this can pivot side to side like so. So can this little extra grip section right here. We do have a pop out little tab here for attaching it into the hands. Another pop out little piece right here. This is for storage. And all in all, this is a very classic looking beam rifle. Now this variation I think is absolutely awesome. We've got two sides here. Once again, you have the choice of sticking those stickers on the lenses or behind the lenses. I prefer behind. We've got a green one up front, a yellow one round back. That one can pivot side to side once again. We've got some moving parts. This part flips out from here like so. Once again, that is for storage. And we have this little flip out handle on the side right here. So that is pretty awesome. And speaking of that storage, we have a couple of buttholes right here. Just pop the standard one in like so. That's that classic looking beam rifle. And there is that beefy looking version. That just, once again, pops into that hole on the back for storage, like so. We also have the same storage holes on the back of the shield right here, so using that same flip out peg, you can stick the beam rifles on the inside of the shield like that. That holds on solid as a rock. Actually, very solid. Come out of there, there we go. As for the other one, let's try that out. That pops in like so, and this one kind of sticks out a little bit and doesn't quite feel as solid. Speaking of the shields, there's the standard one there on the left. There is the Ichiban Kuji version on the right. So this features a lot of clear parts in the front. That's the red and the yellow. Flipping around back on these guys, we've got that little opening section there so we can look out. This little attachment point can pivot around like so, so you can put it on either or arm. This little handle section can move up and down. As for the attachment, this can be attached either around this way for storage on the back of the arm like so, or it can be pulled off and attached on like so for, well, holding it like it's on the front of the box, which to me looks like it's upside down, but I guess that's also an option. The shield attaches on in the usual way, that is onto the peg hole in the back of the arm and just attaches on nice and securely like so. You can attach this into the hand as well if you want, but it's good and solid on there anyway. Next up in here then, we've got the bazooka. This has a whole bunch of moving parts once again. The side on the front can move side to side like so. Once again, it is a sticker behind a clear segment. The handle can pivot like so. The magazine segment can be removed like so. We have this set of missiles. Actually, we've got two sets of missiles. They just pop in like so, pop up inside of it like that. And around on this side here, we also have one of these little attachment pegs. 
which pops out just like that there. Once again, when this is not being used, it can be attached onto the butt just like so, and it doesn't say anything in the instructions about using it with the shield, but let's try it out anyway. So anyway, let's try attaching that into the peg hole on the shield. So yeah, it does fit. Let's try it the other way around. It might fit a little bit better. Get that scope out of the way, pop it in like so, and that is a little bit on the better side. Can this attach with that big old yoke in the way? Let's attempt it. So it can attach on, but it is a bit on the uh, unwieldy side. So the next thing we have in here is the base adapter. Let's try that out, pop it in like so. Attach the Gundam on like this. And all in all, that is nice and secure, so definitely passes the wiggle test up there. Once again, that movement is from the action base itself, not from the action base adapter. Moving now on to the last aspect of this review, and of course that is the articulation. So far so good with this kit, but it really is the articulation that makes this go from a standard master grade to one that is off the charts awesome. Here we go. I also mentioned that the eyes are still on. I'm totally surprised. I went to dinner and everything, so uh, yeah, they're holding up. But anyway, as usual, we're going to be working from the head down. As for that giggity giggity, it's got one. It's not crazy, but it's much, much better than what we saw with the Zakus, the last couple of Zakus we took a look at. There it is, all the way down, all the way up, pretty good. There's that side to side pivot, and then there it is all the way around. At the shoulder, this is a bit of an interesting joint. It doesn't really pop out to the front like what we usually get. This moves more out to the back, so this comes out a lot, as you can see right there. So that gives us more to the front movement like so. You can bend that nearly all the way around the chest, which is cool. As for usual, this arm can spin the full 360 degrees. We've got that rotation up top for that spin punch. That right there is the bend at the elbow, perfect. As for the wrist here, it is a ball and socket, as you can see right here. This can also disconnect and move downwards like so. Rotate in, that's a ball joint in this little segment, and all of those fingers, of course, are individually articulated. But I'm not gonna mess around with them because they're really, 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 really delicate. At the chest here, we do have an opening cockpit, simple as, there is that tiny little Amuro Ray in there. Also, as you can tell from the way he's sitting and all of that, there is no core block system in this particular Gundam. So this particular version of the Gundam, as in the one from the origin, doesn't have the core block system until it's upgraded at Jaburo. So that means, check this out. We actually have an ab crunch in this Gundam and a fairly decent one at that. On top of that, we do have a side to side there and all in all, this is quite the poseable torso right here. Very, very nice. On top of that, we do have the full rotation at the waist there so that can spin all the way around. Round back, of course, we do have that awesome shoulder cannon. This has two points of rotation, one here, one up here. So this is all for getting that over the shoulder and then that can pull out and extend at that point there, just like so. The two thrusters on the back, they can move up and out like so, down and up, as well as in and out ever so slightly. Moving down to the skirting armor now, these are a mix of a hinge and a ball joint so they can drop down out of the way like that. Pull up out of the way, these are quite good. The ones on the front are exactly the same as on the back, so this is definitely a double premium butt flap back here. And as for the side skirts, they can move forward and back like so, as well as move up like that. So inside the waist here, and I will take off the leg to show this, we do have this little segment that moves forward and back like this. So this is not unlike what we've seen on the Freedom 2.0, so that means because it goes at a bit of an unnatural angle there, where it'll be rotating at strange angles, this is a little bit of a break risk. So be careful with that. That does drop down into an awkward kind of position, and we try and move it forward and back. It doesn't necessarily move forward and back anymore. It kind of goes in a inward, outward, rotatey kind of way like this. So it is easy to mistake the direction it will go and break that. So be careful. But anyway, with it at its normal point, there it is, kicking all the way up to the front, gets a little bit blocked. There it is, out of the back, not too bad. As for that splits, this thing nails it completely. And how about if we drop down that joint? So then we get a completely different kick up to the front that lets it go up a lot more. But once again, be careful with that joint. Then it rotates out to the back like so for that sort of kick out to the back. And as for the splits at this point, Let's drop them both down, and now the legs can only get to that point. So this does kind of change the rotation angle 
as well as the kick outwards completely. Anyway, next up we've got that full spin kick up there. As for the bend at the knee, that's what we get. That is very, very nice. You do have a bit of moving knee armor there. So one more time, there it is closing up. And that is awesome. We also have that splitting thigh armor right there as well. So all in all, that is pretty awesome. Moving down to the ankle now, and this armor is just on a bit of a ball joint, so you don't really get all that much out of that. At the ankle then, there is the foot all the way up. There it is all the way down. We have a pretty fantastic side to side there. And then we have a bend at the toe as well as a bend at the heel. Lastly then, and pretty unique, that toe section there can pivot like that. But anyway, let's pop that leg off once again to check out that functional movement. So anyway, there is the movement all the way to the front before bending the toe. So there is as far forward as it can go with the toe still planted on the ground. So that should still be awesome for some crouches. As for all the way back then, still planted on the ground, that heel can go back a little bit. So that is what we get. And finally then, there is the side to side. And that is fantastic. With that bendy toe as well, we get a little bit more of an angle there. So all in all, that is pretty awesome. So all in all, there is a whole load of different variants of the Master Grade Granddaddy Gundam. So if articulation is what you're after, then you're going to be looking for the Master Grade Gundam The Origin. Hands down. Articulation here is perfect. So anyway, that right there is it for the review of the Master Grade Gundam The Origin, as well as the Ichiban Kuji variant of it. All I can say about this kit is either version, without a doubt, ticks all of the boxes. Looks, check, without a doubt. Build in articulation, check, definitely. And as for options and accessories, this box is absolutely loaded with them. So that, without a doubt, makes this kit right here Gundarium tier. If you've ever been thinking about getting this, if you haven't yet built one, I highly recommend that you do. And if you want some kind of crazy, rare, odd variant of it, then there's no better place to look than Bai. Links down there in the description. As always, thank you so much for watching. Leave a like, it really does help out the channel. And of course, make sure to come back for more Gunpla reviews. See you next time. So once again, I cannot end this video right here without thanking everyone who helps out with the channel, whether by watching the videos, hitting that like button, or by supporting me on my channel memberships, like NQG420 and Craig Jerry, or over on Patreon, like Kaiser721, Forged Horizons, Vex, Bullwig, and Tyler Sanders.